very good. Well, um, as we're meeting remotely, um, there's an introduction that we need to read. Um, so I'll read that and take care Alan, of that. Excuse me one second, Al. Did you just um, get Alan's text also? Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. I was looking for the dial in information. It's not working. I can, okay. I'll... I can do that right now if while you read the um, the entrance thing. Okay, very good. All right. Okay, uh, so this open meeting of the Menden Board of Health is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's updated guidance on holding meetings pursuant to the act extending certain COVID-19 measures that was signed into law on June 16, 2021. This act includes an extension until July 15, 2022 of the remote meeting provisions of his March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. For this meeting, the Menden Board of Health is convening by video slash telephone conference as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. This meeting will feature public comment. So with that, uh, that said, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Tom. For those who have not been on our meeting before, we have a procedure that has been working well, and I would like to convey that to you right now. Certainly, I am not a control freak, but as chairman, when you would like to have uh, acknowledgement to say something or ask a question, could you raise your hand? Tom can see you on the screen and he will let me know and I will call on you. And when you're done with your comments or questions, you can send it back to me so that we can have a neat and orderly um, meeting. Thank you. I'd like to start with the update on the tobacco enforcement. Um, did one of the ladies or both of you involved with the tobacco enforcement? Correct. What is your name, please? My name is Joan. Um, I'll lower my hand. My name is Joan Hamlet, and I'm the director of the Boards of Health Tobacco Control Alliance. And I brought with me uh, Jody Briganti, who is a trained per diem tobacco inspector for my program. Um, right now, from June 1st of 2020 through June 30th of 2022, we are funded to provide tobacco control services for most of the towns surrounding Menden. Menden was not included in this um, RFP amendment, which I, I don't know why, because we do do the inspections in Milford's North, Northbridge, um, Oxbridge, Blackstone. So we kind of circle right around you. Um, so we were contacted about your interest in tobacco control inspections. And I came on board as, you know, I've been a director of tobacco control under the Massachusetts Tobacco Control Program since 1994. And Jody has been working with me for a couple of years. So I had um, offered that Jody could do some per diem inspections um, for you. So we got invited on to this meeting just to kind of talk about, you know, how, what that would look like. Because right now um, there's a state database that, tracks all local inspections, state inspections, and federal tobacco inspections. And um, for Menden, you are, it looks like in our post database that Menden is getting some federal inspections and one state inspection occurred recently. Um, so usually they'll if there's a violation, they'll mail something to your board just to let you know about it. However, if you have a local inspector doing an inspection, you can issue the fines the fines for a sale to a minor under the state statute are 1,000, 2,000, and 5,000 for first, second, and third in a 36 month period. Um, there's also a flavor restriction that requires a thousand, um, 2,000, and a $5,000 violation in, um, for first, second, and third. And that's um, making sure that all the stores have all the products that they were supposed to remove um, by the governor's order on uh, June 1st, 2020. Um, in in Med Menden, you're not funded. So these notices went to retailers from whatever email address they put on their DOR, the Department of Revenue license. And 
Um, it doesn't look like there's been any local local information or enforcement. So, you know, I would recommend to start a retail education visit to each retailer where we give them, well, not we, it would be Jody, your per diem inspector. Um, they would get a new law packet that explains all the new laws, their responsibilities. Um, Jody would be able in that retail ed inspection she would be able to go over all the laws, their responsibilities, what they can and can't have in the store, provide them with all the proper signs that are required by the state. And then she can inform them that youth access inspections are occurring on a regular basis. And that if you know these are gonna be the penalties, do you have any questions? And then she could go out and do a um, youth access check for you where she would take a trained minor um, out to the store and attempt to purchase tobacco. And the minor would be somebody that's already trained through the state database. They would be um, a, a trained youth inspector that does not live, go to school or work in Menden. So they'd be a complete stranger to the community. We normally move kids around and bring them from, like maybe bring a Lemonster kid to Menden. And if we had a trained kid that was down in your area, we would bring them up to another area in the state because we don't want the youth to ever be in a position where it's a brothers, cousins, friend, person that might be selling to them and whatnot. So there's you know pretty strict protocols that we do follow. Um, so if you're interested in getting some initial inspections um, done in a per diem way, you know, I highly recommend Jody. And what I would like to see, we don't know what the RFP is gonna be like because these services that I have with the other towns that surround Menden end June 1st, 2022, but they extended the RFP. They're not doing a request for proposal. So they're just extending it. And this, this, this extra money was only for two fiscal years. So if there's any money available, um, you know, Jody could work for you per diem, but the minute there's an RFP that opens to bring you into the program, these services are 100% free to your town um, if, you're in, if you're in an MTCP program. So it just seems like, you know, you're an island right now, surrounded by tobacco control, but no services for yourself. Um, so, you know, we we pay Jody a per diem rate and a uh, mileage rate, and she goes out and does these inspections. And she, 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 we we do them as per diem employees, but a lot of programs do them as per per diem and consultants. So they're not nat actually on your payroll. She would just bill you, and you you pay her. Um, I, I don't know the logistics of what you're looking at. So we wanted to talk to you about what she could offer you and what she has behind her is a program that's existed since 1994 with depth, a, a great depth of policy enforcement, hearing experience. Somebody wants to appeal it, we can do all that for you. If somebody wants to you know, pay it, we can answer all those questions um, for you. Well, yep. I am Andy, like, Andy, before you continue, I just want to validate. I believe we do have Alan now on the call. Is that right, Alan? <clears throat> I think you might be muted, Alan. Yes I, yes, I am here. All right, excellent. Okay, everybody's on board. Thank you. Alan, you, you caught most of that from the time that you text me what you were on. So you, you are aware of what, what we're talking about? Uh, yes, I am, and I'm the one that reached out to uh, Joan. Yeah. yeah, I knew that. Thank you. Joan, I myself am flabbergasted and so excited to hear everything that you just said because we struggled a few years ago, and I'm the biggest proponent for the tobacco, um, the stings, and the, and the control. I, I just... I am just beside myself by everything that you said. And one of the things that we discussed um, quite a while ago when we were going to be doing um, compliance checks was someone offered to have their child do it. And we, we discussed it and said, this is absolutely not right that because of um, peer pressure when it gets found out. And you just touched on it with a great explanation. I just love everything that you just said. I myself can't wait to be working with you and Jody, and I'm excited about this. We've been trying to get someone in here. We 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 had um, oh my God, I'm at a loss for the names, but um, we've been waiting for for someone else to get back to us and has not. I just got off the phone with Missy in Oxbridge a little while ago. As you probably know, Missy used to work with us over here. We used to work for Missy, I should say, 
and she had nothing but great things to say about you guys, and I am so excited to hear everything I just heard. Pam, over to you. Well, I'm on board. Yeah, I think it's great. I think we've been kind of lacking lacking the service. Um, as we know, I, I, I mean, there aren't a whole lot of establishments in our town, but nonetheless, we've had incidences in the past where there have been violations, and, you know, I think we need to get back on track and kind of, you know, kind of keep people, quote, unquote, honest. Um, I like the initial approach, uh, Joan, that you outlined as far as a, calling it a retail education um, inspection to kind of start things out. I think that's that's good. That kind of helps um, kind of let people know, okay, well, Menden's kind of paying attention again and and uh, taking that viewpoint. And um, then theoretically, they'd be prepared down the road should, you know, somebody come and visit them. But um, yeah, I'm on board. Um, I think it'd be uh, wonderful to get this uh, ratcheted back up again. Andy? Alan, how do you feel about this? Yeah, no, I'm definitely on board. I was, uh, you know, had a great conversation with Joan and was uh, looking forward to meeting Jody. Uh, so uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, let's get started. Thank you. Joan, um, what, what, is, uh, what is your process for moving forward to be working with you and your group? Um, right now, you can't work actually with my group. You can hire Jody independently as a per diem inspector. So you would have to work that out, How you, what mechanism your town has to pay her. Um, but she has all the resources through our program and, and you know, the depth of us behind her. So I won't, because our services are free, but they're only free to people who are in my RFP and we can't right. like charge somebody else. Um, but I'm excited. I assist programs all the time that aren't funded. I try to give the information to any board that needs the help that I that I can give um, that I'm allowed to under the grant. And then with Jody, so there'll be a you know you guys will have to go back to your um, I don't know if you have a town manager or you have a personnel director um, and say we want to you know hire this person on and work out with Jody you know what the per diem rate would be and her mileage and, and things like that. Um, what you, we would provide with you is the youth. So then you would have to figure out how you're paying the youth. Uh, some programs pay their youth with a warrant stipend, has nothing to do with payroll because um, the youth get paid to do the compliance check as well um, when, you, when you're ready to do the youth compliance check. One of the things I wanted to highlight is that the goal of public health is to help people come into compliance, not catch them in non-compliance. So the educational component is really, really important. With the education that we've been giving people, we've had significant violations. And Oxbridge would tell you right now, we have five violations, $5,000 in fines, and three people are appealing their violations because of the permit suspension that goes with them. Um, so we're assisting them through all that. Jody is trained, so she'll be able to do all those things uh, for you when needed. The fines are 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, and it's issued under the state order, but it gets collected and goes into your general fund. So if there's a fine, this $5,000 fine in Oxbridge is being collected and would be put in their general fund. If you um, had a violation, the same thing would happen. They would be ordered to pay the town of Menden and it would go into your city uh, city clerk or town, or town, select, uh, town clerk's office. Um, however, if you're one of the few people that are lucky enough to have a revolving health department fund, you could put it in your revolving health department fund, but out of 42 boards, I only know of five that are lucky enough to have one of those. So, um, you know, these are all things that we'd be able to walk you through. Jody does per diem inspections for me and all those towns surrounding you. It's, it's not out of her way to do additional per diem for you. It's just, she'd have to be paid separately um, to do sure. those for the program. Sure. Yep. Is uh, Kim Newman, are you on the call this evening? I do not see Kim. Actually, there's con uh, concurrently uh, right now, Andy, there's also a uh, select board meeting taking place at the same time that we're meeting. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So that's something that we would have to <clears throat> get um, Kim involved with Jody to get this ironed out. Is that correct, Tom? Yeah. So Kim would be the primary person just to validate the, uh, the processing aspect of it. And from just getting uh, Jody into the system, 
properly so that the uh, invoicing uh, that would come along would be handled um, properly. I would love to see this take off and not get dropped as so many things get dropped. We get excited, talk about things, and then the next thing we know, nothing's happened. I really, really would love to see this program in place. I might ask maybe uh, Jody if you'd be able to um, maybe send along to us, um, I could give you our email address, what your um, pricing uh, structure is like. So we had that in hand, that'd be something I could then, we could then send over to our town administrator. No, I absolutely can do that. Okay. And I think it would be great if I could come down and meet with in person with people and see, you know, explain and give you some handouts as to what we do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> um, and this is Joan, I'm sorry. Um, we also, we also um, would ask the state, because we keep track of all this on a state database right now, Mendon's unfunded, so I don't have access to look at Mendon's records or Jody doesn't either. So we would let the state know that you're an unfunded program that would like to do inspections and you're gonna hire an a MP, MTCP trained inspector and they'll give us access to posts so we can see the history of all your retailers. And I don't know if any of you are familiar and have encountered DJ Wilson from Mass Municipal Association or Cheryl Sabara from Mass Associated Health Boards. Um, they provide a lot of assistance to boards for policies and procedures and things like that that are unfunded. And they actually help a lot of funded boards as well. Um, but they've been around for years and years. Um, so usually if somebody's unfunded and we're not gonna be able to help them, I hook them up with with um, DJ and Cheryl to assist them with you know policy questions and enforcement. We and if have somebody worked with both of them. I'm sorry? We have worked with both of them. DJ was instrumental in helping us getting our regulations ironed out. Yeah, D D DJ and Cheryl are the it, it people. I've been working with them for 22 years. DJ's retiring in June, so it felt like somebody cut my arm off. But um, oh, they're gonna they're gonna pace him for a month to train the new person for a whole month. So they're gonna have two yep. two people. And Cheryl is still around. So Jody has access to these people as funded for me, and she has access if she's assisting an unfunded program. But if you're working with us and there's an rp that comes out it it's easier to get into the program than if you're completely unfunded trying to crack yeah. in into it when the rp um does come come around um and i know that massachusetts tobacco control program wants to provide as much assistance as they possibly can to um boards whether they're funded or not funded so you know it's Wonderful. still you're still still part of the larger family you're not out there on on your own very good. Jody, do you have anything to add for us at tonight's meeting? Would anything you would like to say to well, I'm, just, I'm really looking forward to working with you. Wonderful. And bring you all are the you information that, that I have and that I've learned from Joan. Are you local, Jody? I'm not, actually. I live in Royalston, Massachusetts. Oof, but oh, that's a little is, ride. It, it's, it's a ways. It's a ways. So... Jody, would you like to uh, jot down uh, the email address? I would, thank you. All right. Okay. All right, so you would send that along to B-O-H, mm -hmm. and that is at Mendon, M-E-N-D-O-N-M-A dot gov. Okay. Great, thank you. Joan, was there anything further? I know you still had your hand up, Joan. Was there anything further you wanted to? Oh add no, I, I I thought it was lowered. I'm sorry. No, no just worries. That, um, this this excites me, even though I can't bring you into my program right now. Um, it does excite me that you know we're going to be able to help because lots of times what happens is if there's not a lot of consistent inspections, we're inspecting everybody around you, and then it drives the non-compliance issues into your community, where you know like if you're not if you nobody's stopping you for speeding on route two, you're going to go more than 55. So we kind of find that 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 tends to happen. Well, you know, so we're hoping that we can educate them and then check, but it's penny wise and pound foolish because if you're going to collect a thousand to a $5,000 in a fine in the course of the year, that's going to, you know, you're going to be making, we, we don't try to make money off of public health, but it's going to cover any expenses you're going to be. And then some that you're going to pay out for Jody. 
And one of the things that we'll do to get this started is, um, you know, Jody can coordinate her work when I'm already sending her out there. So most of the mileage can be on my funded program dime. So that will, awesome. that will help. That will help out a little bit so you'd only be paying the mile just to get started that you'd only be able to have to pay the mileage within um because we're funded to do so many inspections for them and it's it's it would be very easy to coordinate that to make it a little bit affordable for you guys being in an unfunded town that's wonderful thank you for that Great. all right um alan do you have anything else to add at this time Nope, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for reaching out, Alan, and all the work you've done. Joan, Jody, thank you very much for joining our meeting. Thank you for and, having and, us. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies. Okay. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay. You. Talk to you. Thank Look you. forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye. 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 Well, great news. I'm excited to hear all of that. Yeah, Andy, geez, I was envisioning you were doing somersaults there in the kitchen. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny, Tom, because I, I think you remember who was who offered to let their daughter um, do the inspections one time. And we had that discussion, whereas it would not be safe for the for the minor child if, if he, he or she got recognized in the town. And boy, she always was all over that. She touched on it and and they, they were already way, way ahead of us in that uh, understanding. And that's that's really cool. I like oh, that. Yeah. No. So, so given that we have uh, Tom on, Tom, glad to see you again. Been a while. It feels like it's been a long time. Huh? <laughs> I was talking to Tom earlier today. He was telling me he was feeling a little bit under the weather. So, but he think he's on the mend. It's nice to uh, nice to see him <clears throat> on the call. Given that we do have Tom on, um, I know Andy. If we want to kind of jump out of order and just kind of address your issues, not the whole. Tom up longer than we would need to. Sounds good to me. Thank you. Okay. So I know that I don't think there was anything specific, Tom, that we had on the agenda, but I know there was general conversation that we've had and that Alan's had. So I didn't know if I'll maybe let you take the lead on where you want to take the conversation. Uh, yeah. So I, I think there was a, um, uh, we need to do some sort of, um, uh, some sort of document. I was kind of hoping that your, your new person would be online too, so we can talk about uh, preparing a uh, SOP of some sort or something for, uh, you know, realtors. Uh, I think you were asking about realtors or some people buying properties that questions they should, should be asking, uh, process questions such as, you know, like, what do I need? when I'm purchasing a house, a Title V inspection, you know, well uh, well results, stuff like that, so. Excuse me, Tom. Yep. What is an SOP, please? Uh, uh, sorry, Standard Operating Procedures. Um, oh, okay. Just uh, um, more of a guidance. So I it's actually it. not an operating procedure for them. It's more of guidance on. Um, so I have put some together before, um, some... I'm looking for them. It's, it's been a long time since I um, since I've opened it up, so it's probably on an old computer. Um, but it's they're 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 pretty good as far as uh, uh, you know. This might be stuff that we can take from other towns that you know, so we don't have to recreate anything. But uh, that's what you're looking for, right, Alan? Something. Ah, uh, yes. Like um, I actually have a, a resident that has a equine property. Uh, on Washington Street. Uh, they were a former owner of 106 Millville Road, which we're very familiar with. Um, and she actually has uh, like three wells on the property. She's got a cesspool. Uh, everything appears to be in working order, but she wants to uh, uh, possibly put the uh, property on the market. Uh, so uh, it seemed as though maybe the realtor didn't... Uh, prepare her uh, for the different, you know, questions that she had and things that she needed to do to get things going. So she was looking for our assistance. Uh, so that's why I reached out to you and suggested that if we had some kind of a, a checklist that pertaining to septic systems and wells uh, for the transfer of a property uh, that we could, you know, just email out to the resident in question um, 
we could, you know, maybe save uh, a lot of time in the future by just generating this list. So thank you very much for, you know, answering uh, my email. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have, uh, you know, for, for septic, there are, um, you know, there's some websites that we can put as a link and we can put it up as a, um, as a document on the web, you know, so they can click the link. Uh, you know, so we we need to know who's a Title V inspector. Um, so the state has a you know a listing. We can point right to that listing. Um, you know, rather than saying, "Well, there's somebody in town," like you know, I'm you know some pumper that we know. We I don't think we we're, we're allowed to do that. We need to give them a generic. Here's here's who's been approved. Um, recommendations are. You know, I can't give you a recommendation, but you know, anyone on the list has passed certain tests and have some certain credentials, and are, um, and you can check the enforcements on them if you needed to. So yeah, we just had that uh, exact example come up uh, today in an email, Alan. I don't know if you had a chance to see the BOH email, but we had an inquiry from the Grandview Ballroom looking for exactly that. Uh, they guess they need some work over there um some pump work and a couple other things and they had reached out to us um actually to missy as well and i i had informed kelly who was the contact that uh you know of missy's status but i did confirm that unfortunately we're not in a position where we could recommend but i did uh tell her that we could certainly provide a list um so what she was looking for was a list of engineers as well as a list of uh, uh septic uh groups that do septic work. So I can, I'm gonna comprise the list and uh, just kind of send that to her alphabetically of people that we know um, that she can then reach out and, you know, have some conversations with, but to- yeah, the, who, are, who are licensed, right. Who, who are licensed, them, right. And they, yeah, and, and if, they, if they're not licensed, then they can go through a process and get licensed. Yeah. Right. And uh, to add to Alan's example and to Andy's awareness, um, and Tom and I were talking about this a little bit, another example came through to us on email where there's a homeowner on Northbridge Road that's looking to do an expansion of their home. They wanna put on an addition because they're gonna have, have um, one of their in-laws move in. And they reached out to us, which I thought was very good of them, some good, uh, good initiative to find out what the requirements are gonna be for their existing septic system in order for them to, you know, to build out this addition, what will they have to do um, possibly to modify or add to their existing system to keep them in compliance, so. If this thing was in place when one Myrtle Drive, Myrtle Road, whatever it is, came along, then, then the whole issue with the well wouldn't have taken place because it would have been on the checklist and would have been taken care of right from the start. Uh, I agreed. And um, I know I talked with an engineer recently um, within the last two weeks. Uh, they were going to email some plans, uh, a property on Cape Road, where they're going to go from maybe a three bedroom to a five bedroom. I don't know if that came through the email. I haven't had a chance to see it, um, but it was um, I believe it was an engineer, female engineer from. Could have been Andrews that um, reached out to me on my cell phone. Oh, actually, it was through Ellen Agro. That's what it was. And remember, Tom, you grabbed some of that, and then I grabbed the other, Tom Fickner? Yes. Yep. Yep. So I don't know if that came through or they submitted the plan, but it was a Cape Road address. Yeah, 23. Uh, I think it's a 23. Yeah. Uh, that sounds right, Tom. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Marianne, I believe her name is, yes. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. Oh, Marianne, Marianne Diffin, I think. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right, good. good. Tom's I'm in the loop. That, I'm glad it flowed through. <laughs> yeah, that one is, um, she's asking to do more soil testing. So she was uh, checking on um, the, the prices of for, for going for soil testing. Um, uh, for, for the board of health fees, that is. Gotcha. All right. 
Well, again, I'm glad it I'm glad it made its way to the right set of eyes. Do we have anything else for Tom Ryder this evening? Well, not that I could think of specifically. Um, well, let, let me uh, meet with, um, with with your new uh, assistant uh, when we get a chance. I, I think okay. uh, he's he's going to start like on Monday. I think. Or, so that's um, the that I believe is the expectation. It was uh, you know we did get a confirmation that uh, he accepted the position. Background checks were completed, and the way it was phrased was that. He'd be ready to start. As a matter of fact, one of the items on the um, select board's agenda tonight is actually to consider the appointment of that individual. Um, I was listening in for a while on the um, select board's agenda, um, but unfortunately, they hadn't got to that topic yet, so I had to break off and uh, get on this call. So um, I think it's probably just a matter of um, technicality. I think everything seemed to be fine. Um, and it was just really a formality that they would approve the individual. Um, and then maybe then it's just a matter of um, saying, hey, when do you want to when do you want to come in? Because he's not uh, the individual is um, does not currently uh, is not currently employed at the moment. So he's he was free to start, I think, pretty much whenever we were looking for him to start. So. All right, yeah, so um, my coordination of, of items such as we were talking about job cards today um, and preparing uh, permit numbers, um, you know, to, uh, whether it's for septic well or food or, you know, how, how you want to how you want to do that to make sure you, things attract. Um, yeah, that was one of the uh, confusing items um, in talking with Tom about that earlier. So I know Missy has that book. You guys know about the way she marks down the permit numbers, but that book is specifically related to septic related type of events, right? When she issues that permit number. But I believe what's not part of that book is like a well permit or another example is like a food permit. So I don't know. I didn't know personally what the permitting numbering scheme was for those items because um, I know we have you know, a couple of uh, documents, I think, waiting a permit in those categories as well. Um, and then, you know, Tom brought up the job card, which I'm glad you brought that up, Tom. It reminded me, and I know you sent me that sample PDF earlier today. Um, should I be able to modify that um, if I wanted to use that as a template, or would that have to come to me in a different format? Um, let me see if I have a word. Um, okay. And because I, I think you know, Missy might have sent it to me originally as Word, so I might have changed it a word. And um, I have the full blown Adobe, so I can just change the, uh, you know, the the um, uh, the fill in spots. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I have uh, we had a reach out from uh, Grant Septic uh, today. I think he's in a. Bit of a quandary because they finished doing some work and they're trying to get a job card so that it could be signed accordingly and get the uh, certificate of compliance for the um, for the homeowner. He wasn't aware until I actually informed him today that Missy was uh, wasn't with us. Oh, so a lot of folks are just kind of still finding out. Tom Ryder, did did you by any chance? happened to hear, I guess it was a while ago. It may have been 2018. I was just reading about it yesterday. Are you familiar with a company out of uh, Millbury called Midstate Sewer? That, that name does uh, familiar. Uh, did you hear what they did? No. So they were dumping in a manhole substantial amounts of septage and they got caught and they're going out of business. They were in business since 1938, and they're going out of business. That the, I wish I could find the. Um, they got fined like crazy, crazy amounts of money to the point where they had to close the doors. And what came to mind was 
I don't know if uh, you guys are privy to this, but quite a few years ago in Oxbridge, um, Mr. Marshand was seen on the side of Ironstone Road, the dirt road that goes by the backside of um, Uniblock, dumping septage into the river. Yeah, I remember that. Nothing ever came of that. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's a, yeah, that's amazing. I've, um, I've seen, um, I've, I've heard of, uh, um, you know, uh, 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 septic hall is, you know, you know, they, they were, they were granted permission one time to, uh, you know, help out a, a town, you know, pump from one pump station to another, put it into the, you know, because the pump station was being repaired. And, and then they took that as, oh, I can do that every time I want now. Um, yep. You know, they were given the, uh, this is a sword, uh, <laughs> and they've gotten caught. Yeah. I have the Word document. Let me, uh, I'm going to email it over to you. I found it. Oh, great. Awesome. And I can, uh, I'll go in the office tomorrow and I'll print up a job card for uh, Brandon and, and give him a heads up and come in and grab it. And Yeah, you can, uh, yeah, manipulate it to, uh, you know, make, you know, make sure we can use, use the latest, you know, sometimes there are corrections to make. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping I can get the information I need from the documentation that would have already been submitted for the address. Um, it was basically a repair. And I know Steve Donatelli had already completed the inspection. Um, so if I don't, I can, I may have to just tap Steve or, or Brandon to fill in a couple of blanks because they look for you know, in addition to the address, like the owner names and a couple other pieces of information on that job card, you know. Okay. As well as uh, I was actually looking today, I was in the office for a brief period. I was looking in that book, a little book that I was talking about earlier where Missy writes down the uh, permit numbers for the uh, septic related type work. And I know nothing that had been logged, well, probably since she left. So we're only like five permit numbers into the into the 22 year. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to yeah. catch up. Yeah, I, I'm not sure we're that far behind, you know, um, but I, I can I can plug in the uh, the gaps. Um, okay. All right. So yeah, when that person comes on board, maybe we'll start cleaning it, uh, that up. Yes. Yeah. Tom. Tom. Yes, Fickner. Alan. Yeah. Um. I believe that the food permits, I don't know if they actually have numbers. <coughs> Excuse me. But the, there is a three ring bind. Excuse me. There is a three ring binder, I believe, that contains all the current permits. And as far as the, the wells go, I think the wells are tied uh, to addresses. Okay. Uh, it seems like a lot of things are tied to, you know, the the property address. When you, you mean like the house, the it. house number? You mean? Right, right. Oh, okay. So I it, it, that that seems to be like the key for finding things is bringing up the, the house address. Anytime Missy and I would have a conversation about any kind of a situation, she was always about, like you said, the street address of a property and then I would have to ask her where is this now to, to try and get on the same page in the same vehicle whatever we, we were doing it was always always about street numbers everything like Alan just said is is tied to that whether it's septic whether it's um, anything wells anything well I know she created um that's how she would store documents she would store all the documents against the street address Right. But it would still it would still raise the question about the permitting format. So like I it looks like at least on the side of the, what she would do is every year. So for example, we're in 2022, the first permit of the year that might be a septic related event would be 01-22. The oh. next one to come in would be 02-22 and so on and so forth through the year. And then that would start over again in the new year. You know a lot of I mean? towns do the same thing as even with uh, installers' licenses. That's exactly how they label them. 
Yeah, keep it simple, you know, which is which is good. So just being Alan had a good point. I forgot about the binder there, Alan. So it should be just a matter of looking in the binder and kind of picking up from where things got left off. Hopefully. Um, all right, Tom. Um, while oh, go ahead, Alan. Yeah, while I'm speaking, I, I hope someone makes sure that the uh, new Board of Health administrative assistant gets a key to the office, please. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. I wonder if Gail's hey. got a spare or where Missy's key ended up. Hey, Tom, we want to give up your key? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Got to pass my six months probation first, right? Oh, well, if it's based, <laughs> if it's based on that, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> All right, well, I think we might be set with uh, Tom. Tom, you have anything? All right, nice seeing you guys. All right. Thank you very much, Tom. I hope you feel better. Thank you. Yep. Thank, thanks, Tom. Feel better. All right, thank you. Good night. Good night. All right, so it's uh, just the three of us on at the moment. No one else has jumped onto the call. So I guess we'll start to uh, hit the back to the agenda flow. So after uh, tobacco enforcement, next up we had an update on hazardous waste day. So that's gonna come to me. So um, in our last meeting, Andy, I know you, you were unable to participate in, Alan and I had talked about this initially. Um, so subsequent to that, in doing some follow-up, um, I did reach out to Mike Sespan about a recommendation uh, for a company. To come in. That, yeah. yeah, and um, he responded uh, with the company NEDT that we're aware of in Sutton. Yeah, and um, I did reach out to NEDT, but they do not provide that type of mobile hazardous day event service. Um, they might provide mobility to go to a house location to pick up something or do a business, but they don't set up like clean harbors had done for us in the past. If I could interrupt um, for one second. Yeah. I just got off the phone with Missy and she said to, that if we line somebody up for, even if we went this whole summer and did not have a household hazardous waste day, we should not hesitate and try and get a date for somewhere around one year from right now and get locked in because that would still have us in the uh, FY22 and we would be okay with the money that's already put aside for this hazardous waste day. We could still have it. We would not necessarily have one this summer, but we would still be within that, that um, fiscal year. So I don't know if you want to try again with, um, clean harbors and see if they had something for April of next year. Well, um, so funny you should mention, um, in addition to reaching out to NEDT, I did also reach out to the contact who had responded to Kim's inquiry from clean harbors. Um, gentleman's name is Dan Applegate. Uh, he was the one that reported back to Kim that there wasn't any availability for 2022. So I did, you know, send him a follow-up email um, and I did ask um, a couple of things. I asked how early do they take reservations for hazardous waste day events? And I had also asked about um, a recommendation, a potential recommendation for a company that he may be able to be aware of that could support this year. Um, and so far there's been no responses come back from Dan. Okay. Like, so. like you and I had that conversation. I don't, I'm, I'm assuming you remember when I was talking about my dentist appointments. I get them two appointments in advance. That's my own. So if we could do the same with Clean Harbor, if they allow it, then let's schedule two of them. If they have one for the spring, April, May, or June of next year, let's do that and let's do one for the year after and let's get locked in. If by chance, as we get closer, for some strange reason, we don't have the funding or we don't have uh, any, for some reason it's not gonna happen. We can say, hey, look, only fool and you can have this date back. I doubt very much that there's a lock-in fee. There may be, I don't know that. We can check into it, but um, a placeholder, if you will. I, I think that we sh we've got to start thinking along those lines because household hazardous waste days have taken off throughout the Commonwealth. People are like, hey, what's Menden doing? 
now everybody's doing it. So I think that we need to try and beat them to the punch. Get the well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm on board with that philosophy. I totally agree. Um, the point of, that I'm trying to make at the moment is they do not seem to be responsive to us. That's all yeah. my point. So no, maybe it's going to take another, it might take a phone call and maybe this Dan Applegate is somebody that, you know, maybe I can circumvent and we can try to reach somebody else other than Dan, but, you know, but it definitely, I think it's lining them up a couple of um, years in advance. If we can do that, I'm all on board for that. Yeah. Well, I get your point. I, I just wanted to get that in there. Go ahead, Alan. Yeah. That sounds good to me. And I, I'm sure AJ's dentist has a 24 hour cancellation. <laughs> uh, as an FYI, too, there was another company I, that I also reached out to, uh, a company called Clean Earth. Um, I had gone onto their website and just kind of put in some base information. Um, I had gotten a response back from one of the people there um, looking to get more info. Um, I did respond to them um, via email with an outline of what our needs would be. And um, crickets, there was no response back. So I'm, I'm guessing that they don't do that kind of service either. So. Uh, also, too, I also reached out to Waste Management, um, but there was no response to my initial reach out from Waste Management. So they must be very busy companies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Plenty of work. They got plenty of backlog. So. So that was the, uh, that's what I had myself on as this waste day. I don't know if, uh, Alan, you wanted to add anything? Uh, no, but I, I guess if I ever uh, decide to come out of retirement, I'll go into the hazardous waste business because uh, <laughs> all I got to do is respond to people and I'd be uh, working. There you go. Yeah. Andy, anything in addition on hazardous waste day? Not at this time. Thank you. Okie dokie. Uh, next on the agenda, um, discussing the contract extension with E.L. Harvey. Well, I don't know where we want to go. I think it was um, more of a general topic. Um, I know we're going to be heading into our, our third and final extension year with them. Um, and I know from a EL Harvey perspective, our rate is already kind of set. It's in the it's in the extension contract itself, so we know what we're doing there. Um, and then I think the other piece of the coin that goes along with that happened to be um, setting the proper rate for the coming billing cycle. Um, Alan and I had talked a little bit about this on our last meeting. It's a combination of not only knowing the um, the rate that EL Harvey charges, but knowing the tonnage um, that goes along with that, which had basically always been kind of a guesstimate that Missy would do based on you know the previous couple of years and take an average and taking those totals together and then dividing them up by the number of households and there you'd have your uh, your fiscal rate for the coming for the coming year. By the same um, token, by the same token, that I'm sure you're aware of this, but I just want to hear it. That in our budget, there's roughly thirteen thousand dollars that needs to come out, which is for our household hazardous waste day and the um, the officer, the cop, to work the detail. That's in our budget that needs to be removed. Then take the rest of it and and divide it, and you get a more accurate, along with everything you just said get a more accurate fee for the users. I thought uh, Missy had already done that for us. It's already a separate line item, I thought. Well, she just told me that this evening, that whenever, whenever the amount comes through, that $13,000 needs to be removed before. That's how she put it. So, okay. Uh, but she just said this was just an hour ago. Hey, Alan, your thoughts? Yeah, I had the same conversation, and I would have forgot to take those numbers out. Um, I believe El Harvey is like three twenty nine, maybe, for the next year. So we know what you know that number is. Um, 
I don't know. We'd have to look at the wheel of braided contract as to what our price per ton is going to go to. Well, that's still locked in for a few more years, isn't it? Till 27? Yeah, but it, it, it's locked in. It's locked in on a schedule, though. It, it changes every year. Oh, okay. It was a 10 year agreement. Right, right. But I believe there are steps built in, okay. which makes sense over a long, you know, a long term. Yeah, just so, like E.L. Harvey, they did the same thing. Right. Yeah. Right, because we had what we had a three year with them with an option for two extensions. Yeah. Correct. And the other thing we have to do is we have to sit down uh, with E.L. Harvey probably in October at the latest and decide whether or not we're going to go out for bid or not. And as we have been advised over the years, uh, sometimes when you go out to bid it can cost you a lot more money. So, right. you know, we like working with Mike. We like working with E.L. Harvey. Um, you know, Mike has a, a world of knowledge, and I think he's been very fair with us. Yep. Um, so I think it would, you know, it'd be nice if we could continue to work together. But, you know, who knows where the numbers are going to go. We, we know they're going up, but, um, you know, hopefully – with our relationship, we can get some numbers that are, you know, favorable. Um, we go out for bid. Who knows what those numbers are going to be? Yeah, I would say, um, I would say, com in comparison, I always use uh, someone that we know who has private service in a neighboring town. What they've been paying on an annual basis in comparison to us, our residents are far less pay far less than what. This individual does in another town for private service. Oh, absolutely. And we've yeah. heard that over and over again. Yeah. Two, so, two things. Do you know that um, Mike is done in, about, I think it's a year and nine months? Yeah, I, I heard conversation about that. I know he won't be around forever. Right. And the other thing is, maybe one of you knows the answer to this, along the lines of what Alan was just saying. If we are currently in contract with somebody, whether it's trash hauler, whether it's whatever, do we have the right legally? And I guess that, that's the wrong term um, to negotiate new contract extensions without going to bid, without raising eyebrows. Of course, that's always going to happen. I, I'm trying to formulate my words to get a good question across, but. To, to make a lateral move and stay with a company that you're already doing business with, is that safe practice? I don't know if I'm coming across right. No, I know what you're no, saying. I, you're basically you saying, you're saying, yeah, yeah. You're basically saying, are we committed uh, as a municipality to automatically go out to bid once a, uh, an existing contract is coming to an end? Yeah. I, and I, I, think, I don't think... I don't think we're under obligation to go out for bid. I would I would agree because I think Andy in years past when we were had Republic, we were automatically jumping to keep Republic a couple of times. We never went out to bid every every cycle, as I recall. Yeah, I think, uh, I think you're there right. was That's familiar. There was something that Missy yeah. said that uh, guided that was a guidance that allowed us to continue to keep the same vendor, and I forget the ruling or the the guideline that allowed us to keep the same vendor without us having to go out to bid. Okay. That well, something else that we, yeah, something else we have to take into consideration is, uh, I don't know how many years are left on the wheel of Breda contract, mm. but we, we have an obligation to wheel of Breda with that contract. Yeah. Though th there's a couple of moving pieces. Um, and that group that Missy was a part of that negotiated that contract, there was a, a number of towns. Um, I, I don't know if that group is going to get together, you know, maybe at year eight and start negotiating with Wheel of Brader again. So we're going to have to, you know, know whether we want to be part of that group. Well, I, I would think uh, from a cost perspective, 
I would think monetarily it's going to be cost effective to be part of that collaborative as opposed to trying to do something on our own. I agree, but that also means whoever we uh, contract with the hire to, to haul has to be willing to haul at the wheel over it. Uh, correct. So assuming that we're not going to be changing trash haulers, that we stay with E.L. Harvey, they already have an association with wheel operator. Correct. Right? So, you know, we won't have a, we wouldn't have an issue. But it so, is, you know, you know it, yeah, it, it's definitely something we need to, uh, you know, put in motion. Now, as far as this extension goes, is there anything that we have to sign or do? With this extension, or is it automatic? Do we just have to express it, which we, I believe we already did? That's a good question, Andy. Do you, do you know if we have to like formally say to Mike, "Hey, we're going to we're going into this extension," or is it just automatic? I think we already did that, didn't we? Did we? Okay. I, well, that, I do believe I do believe we did. Okay, and we did that I with did. Mike. To Mike's aware, to Mike's knowledge, mean Mike's aware. Yeah, I thought. I know he wasn't on our meeting, but uh, I believe Misty handled that for us. Okay. I will I will check with Mike. I'm writing myself a note right now, and I will check with Mike tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, we may have actually done it internally on a meeting to. You I know, think she approve. said we didn't really we didn't have to do anything. It was just an automatic. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Well, unfortunately, with, with her seat being absent for quite a while, um, I do appreciate you uh, reaching out, AJ, and just double checking. Well, you guys are doing a lot also, and I think between the three of us, we're getting it done. But you guys are do doing the brunt of the work because I'm not good with computers. I'm not illiterate, but it just frustrates me more than you can imagine. Understood. No worries. Um, so that that would take us to aside from just you know validating with Mike that you know we're a go to just to continue service. We are getting to the point where the rate itself has to somehow be given to the to the folks in the accounting group to start processing the bills so that they can go out to Kelly and Ryan for distribution to the residents. So how do we want to handle? <clears throat> Uh, the rate aspect. Did, did we want to see if uh, we wanted, say, Jody to do some assessment on the accounting side and determine the rate? Has there been any changes in the uh, the list? Do you, does anybody know? Have we added more? Is there less? Uh, or are we pretty much even for the amount of subscribers? Well, we definitely added people because I know, I, I mean, I've seen ads come in. I know Alan has, uh, you know, seen ad, additional people wanting to be added to the service. So we've definitely seen some ads. How many, I'm not sure, but, you know, we've had additional homes come online and so forth. So I don't know what the numbers are offhand in that regard, but. Well, I, you know. I know that we've had, I did see one bill early on. And it was, um, I forget what the tonnage was, but it was like $8,000 for three weeks just to wheel a braider. But I don't know where all that information is, you know, to say, all right, the last six months we, we paid for X number of tons at, at the rate of. So I, I don't know. In my conversation with Missy, a lot of that stuff is in the computer in a trash folder. And How appropriate. Another, there you go. And another <laughs> thing that was uh, mentioned that we have to calculate in is um, not only do we have to take hazardous waste day and the police detail off, we have to um, account, we have to be able to cover the postage and whether the rate is going up on postage because we plus mail Kelly, all these bills up. Plus Kelly and Ryan's bill. Yeah, so um, there's quite a few numbers that go into making that number. But I don't know where the historical data is stored. 
Well, I did come across the uh, E.L. Harvey stuff somewhat in Missy's computer in the folder. I didn't necessarily see real operator, but I'm, I'm guessing that if we're talking money and we're talking, um, you know, payouts, you know, I would think that the uh, treasurer collector's office would have all of all of that information as well, and maybe maybe in a little more summarized format. I have a suggestion. Uh, yep. Would it be possible for either one of you to reach out to Wheeler Brader and express who we, who you are, and is it possible from their end of it to send us some information about? Although it you know it just explained briefly our situation. And we know that the information is in our computer somewhere. Can you help us? Does this make sense to, or not? If it doesn't, if it's ludicrous, just tell me. Can you help us to understand where we currently are with you? All the questions that were just posed at, at, at year eight, are we, is there going to be more contract discussions? Um, when, when is our contract up? All that stuff like that. Does that make sense or is that not a good idea? Well, I would say not that it's not a good idea. Um, I think for purposes of the rate for the cycle, since we're, we are already in a contract relationship with Wheel Abrader, I think we have the data at hand uh, because, you know, they've been billing us, you know, as Alan pointed out, for the tonnage, right? And what we use there for a reference is, is a guesstimate, right, based on the tonnage that is picked up on an average of so many months or year, what have you. Um, we have that info because those invoices have come in and they've been paid. And I believe the invoices they they give the tonnage level, and we know the they do. We know the amount, right? So all it, I think all it really is is a matter of getting that information, looking back, you know, a reasonable period of time, taking the average, and then applying that with what we know will be the rate for Yale Harvey. You know, backing out, like you say, hazardous waste day, police detail, a couple of those things, maybe factoring in a postage increase and Kelly Ryan and figuring out what the uh, the rate's supposed to be. But I mean, I would like to think that uh, we could tap the treasurer collector's office for some assistance. I mean, I could certainly reach out to Kim as, you know, as a town administrator from her perspective, what her thought would be. I mean, it's a it's probably the biggest budget in the town, so I'm sure they're going to want to make sure they get it right. It is well, the biggest budget in town. Um, yeah, but it's it's on the backs of the subscribers. Right. No, no, understood. But from an income perspective, so if we don't, from a revenue don't perspective. Estimate, yeah, we 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 have to estimate it correctly. Um, right. Jody would if Jody's paying the bills, then she would definitely have. The, the bill, which would list the tonnage, the rate, and the total. But I don't know how she, you know, I don't know how she has it organized. Right. In the computer. Yeah. But I mean, you know, we, we obviously have to get the average and then we have to add some because we're taking on more subscribers. Correct. So, and, and we know that, you know, there's more subscribers, more tonnage. Tom, so, in the computer. You know, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Alan. No, it, it's like I said. I, it, it, the information's got to be somewhere. It's oh yeah, we have the info. Yeah. Yeah, it's just us accessing the information, and like I said, the only thing that was might not be in the computer or might be a little hard to find is that wheel of braid a contract to know what year we're in. And what the step is for the rate? Yeah, that might you know. Um, but I mean, it, it's got to be there somewhere. It's just a matter of us being able to put our hands on that information, and the rest is just doing some math, which we're all capable of doing. Well, I do know there is a I, come across know, a. I was gonna say sorry. I had come across a folder uh, that was called contracts. So that could be, it could fall under that file. That would make sense. You know, and, so. And, um, like, I, once we come up with that subscriber number, if it's, if it doesn't look right, 
compared to what we're already paying as a subscriber, we know we got to look at it. But if it, if it's if it's pretty much in line with what we're already paying, I mean, granted, it may go up a little bit, but usually it only goes up, you know, three or four bucks. Yeah. It's almost a, a negligible increment because along with having new subscribers, you have more tonnage, but you also have more revenue. It's spread over more backs. So we'll know once we do the math and look back at what we've paid the last six months and the six months before that, we'll know if we're on target. Because if the number's way off, we know we didn't do something right. Uh, because the increases over history have been, you know, very small increments. Yeah. Andy, did you want to say something? Uh, two things. First of all, did you remember to turn the uh, recording on? Oh, my gosh. Yes, I did. <laughs> okay. yeah, I just, just thought of it. I don't recall. You probably said it in the beginning there, but I, <clears throat> excuse me, I didn't hear. Uh, the other thing was, I think Alan just touched on it. Um, somewhere in the computer, there is a, a record of all the numbers over the last 10 years, at least. And uh, we could probably see from year to year what percentage there was for growth in the weight and the revenue. That might help us, but I believe Alan just touched on that. Yeah. Well, I'm just wondering as a... Um as a plan of action, let's say, to kind of get the ball rolling, if maybe we don't want to reach out to say, you know, send an email to maybe Kim and Jody and just say, hey, you know, the, the board was talking about the uh, upcoming billing cycle, you know, for the trash recycle program. And we want to determine a course of action here to get the determination of the best rate that is going to need to be applied to the upcoming bills. Uh, any suggestions or recommendations and see how they take that. I, I'm fine with that. I mean, any, any information that someone might have, or if they know where to go looking for it. Yep. Um, I mean, like I said, I don't know what detail Jody keeps as far as when she pays a bill? Well, it's all, it's all public record. So it's, I like to think that the detail is, I like to think it's there because it's, it's all public, right? Well, you know, all we got to do is ask her what she has and see what she gives us. Right. So maybe phrasing it, you know, say, Hey, you know, like I said, we just kind of, we're just kind of talking about the upcoming billing and we know that, you know, we're going to have to make a determination soon. What's your, you know, what's your thought on, you know, on the process here for, um, you know, kind of developing that and, and see what they might suggest. If they have it all the fingertips within Jody and Tracy's hands in the treasurer collector's office, um, great. Um, you know, otherwise, I mean, it's something they, they're doing on a daily basis versus if, one of us have to go and start to explore, you know, that's, you know, we don't necessarily have that regularity of being able to take the time to do that necessarily. Well, well, I, I would think where the tax collector collects the subscribers money yeah. that they would have how much the subscriber was paying for six months and how many subscribers are paying. Oh, they definitely have that. I know for sure Tracy's yeah, got and that. How many list. subscribers are seniors? Yep, they got that too because they and, just sent out a mass mailing. Would, yeah, they would at least have how much money is being paid to Willabreda. Right. Over a three month, six month, 12 month period. Yep. I don't know if they'd have the tonnage and the rate, but they may. Like you said, if it's public record, hopefully there's detail. Yeah, I think it's on, well, that's on the bill that they send us, right? So they, they receive it those is. bills. It is, it should, because that's how they're telling us what they're charging us. They show us the tonnage. Right, it says, it says weekending, I believe. It says how many tons on what days. Yep. 
at, at a rate of whatever the tonnage is and a total like weekly. Right. I believe Wheel of Brady gets the bills to the town on a, a three, four week summary. Yep. Because like I said, that was three weeks and I believe it was eight grand. Yep. So it was 2000 plus a week. Yep. So again, hopefully when she records all that information, it's in that detail. Yes. Yeah. I would say it is. So, so, so then all th that information is going to be there. Right. And I, you know, not that I'm trying to, you know, pass this along. I'm just thinking that from a monetary accounting standpoint, mm -hmm. then maybe having the involvement of our accounting department would be a good way to go with, you know, incorporating Kim as a town administrator in an oversight capacity to make it happen. That's my, that's my uh, flow of things. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to be optimistic that the tax collector has that information in the detail that we need it. Yeah. Okay. So, and I know she'll share it with us if we ask. Oh yeah. Like I said, I, I got a feeling it's going to be in like a, I mentioned that contract folder is probably in there. Um, so would you guys like agree with the, the, the that concept that maybe just creating that initial communication out? Yeah. Reach out uh, and to say, Jody. hey, you know, yes. I'll incorporate Kim and Jody. We, you know, Kim being town administrator, I think should be in on the communication as well. And to Jody and say, look, you know, the Board of Health has just recently discussed the upcoming, you know, bill cycle. We know that, um, there's a, a, you know, a need to determine the rate and, you know, what's the, uh, what's the process here that you would like to follow or would need to follow? Is there anything you would need from us or do you folks have all the information you need to calculate out the new rate? Or is there anything that we can do for you to help that along? Okay. Yeah. Cause I, I thought we actually calculated the rate. Well, normally that would be correct, but we normally have an administrative assistant who's regularly able to to do that work during the course of the day, right? But we don't have an administrative assistant to do that. Right. So okay. what, what I'm saying in lieu of in lieu of that in lieu of that person, <laughs> that resource, I'd like to think that the accounting group, um, you know, could be able to maybe factor that into their workflow to help create that create that uh, rate package number, so to speak, right? Because Dan, Dan's also gonna need to know because he's working the KBS side. Right. Um, he's gonna populate KBS with the information. Uh, and then from there, that's when after that, it goes to Kelly Ryan. So, and mid-May's coming, coming soon because I think they had to get him out by, the bill's out by mid-May. Oh yeah, I mean, we're already behind. Well, we're, I would say behind, but I would think somebody should be thinking about at this point, hey, what about those bills for the trash? Yeah, I mean, it's April 27th. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got two weeks, but, you know, it's, um, you know, I don't know how long it takes for Dan to, to run KBS. I don't think it's too involved. It's just a... No, because it's probably, it's probably just importing what's already in there into the new year and then adding the changes that haven't been added already. Yeah. Well, he's kind of basically, we're looking at a new rate. So he's going to have to, it's probably just, I'm hoping it's just a, I mean, KBS, well, I understand is not always that flexible. Okay. Cause I was going to say the rates only two numbers. You're either right. a full subscriber or you're a senior. Right. So I'm, I'm like to think there's one spot that, change changes and it populates everything, right? Yeah. But I don't, you know, I don't know enough about KBS to confirm that. But I'd like okay. to think it's that straightforward. Yeah, I, I think my uh, my only concern is I would like to see the math. Okay, yeah. So yeah, that's I, fair. You know, that's fair. I, I, I only to, to make sure that like, like we said, you know, AJ was told and I was told to make sure that Hazardous waste day comes out. Yeah. The police detail comes out. The postage yep. is account for. Yep. Because in the end, we're we're the ones responsible for the rate. Yes, so that's true. Yep. I, I would like to 
Not that I want to check the math, but I would like to understand the math. Yep, that's only fair. Yep. See the formula. Well, yeah, actually, I, I believe Oops, I was told there's a formula in the computer somewhere already. Ah, okay. All right. Andy? But it, this was a little off topic, but I wanted to get it out while it was fresh. Um, Missy said that she believes the man's name at Clean Harbors that she dealt with was Daniel Apple, Apple Daniel Appleby or something like that. Does that name sound familiar? Yeah, that, that's the name I, I, I talked to you about in my summary for Hazardous Waste Day, Dan Applegate. Okay, so you did already. All right. Yeah, he's the he's the guy that um, who's he's his name I had only because he's the one that responded to Kim when Kim inquired about a date. She and said he's the one that responded back to Kim saying we don't have a date for you for twenty twenty two. I wanted to make sure that in case it was a different name and that guy didn't usually ha handle the waste days that maybe we, there was somebody else we were missing. But obviously you got it right. Um, she said that she never deleted any emails. So if you Google, not Google, but if you search household hazardous waste day, the, all the emails will be there. All right, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I just wanted to double check in case there was a different person that was this man was not handling it, but you, you've got it. Okay. Oh yeah, no, no, no worries. Yeah, just but they must be busy. He's just not not the best responsive individual, but yeah. What are you gonna do? Okay. No. Um, okay, so as far as um, El Harvey slash you know billing goes and wheel and whatnot. Let me, um, I'll shoot an email and if you like, I can actually send it to you gentlemen first so you can see it before I actually send it. I'll draft one up and then you can review it and if there's something you want to modify or add. Uh, and basically this is going to be an email to, you know, to Kim and to Jody, you know, just kind of summarizing what we talked about tonight and how we, you know, we want to make sure that things are moving forward okay for the billing part and you know calculating out the proper number and if you folks have everything in hand that you need might there be anything from us that you're looking for and uh you know if you could prior to actually putting out the bills once you do calculate a rate could you provide that information to the board so we can just see your a formula that you that you utilized just to make sure all the bases were covered Oh, I'm good. I'm good with that right now, because uh, I I think there's uh, a, a time constraint on it. So yeah, you don't I I trust whatever you put in it. And, That's and what I, I, basically, I basically I basically want to understand. Yeah. Yeah. I basically want to understand the math. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's what Andy? I was just about to say too, Tom was. I trust your judgment at this time. We need to be expeditious. So uh, just what you just said, and, and if you just send it off, I'll be good with anything that you send them. Okie dokie. All cool. right, thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right. Um, all right, the next item on the agenda uh, is one I had Alan put on. It's uh, discussing the municipal master agreement. I guess I'll first ask, do you gentlemen both know what the municipal master agreement is? No clue. Uh, I don't know either. And I uh, reached out to see if Missy knew anything about it. And to her yeah, recollection, no he doesn't know anything about it. Uh, okay. She so, said all contracts are in a file labeled contracts. That's probably that one that, yeah, that I saw. Right. right. Okay. So this municipal master agreement, um, Although they've kind of used the term contract, I, I did end up talking to the gentleman who sent the email to us. It's, um, I don't know if it's as much of a contract as it is a, uh, a re-up of a grant opportunity. Um, what this municipal master agreement uh, is for, it's for what they call SMRP, which is Sustainable Materials Recovery Program. It basically, it's for all the communities to basically sign up municipalities so that if an opportunity comes along for a grant that might pertain to this category, if you're part of the agreement, 
and there's a possible financial grant opportunity that comes along, Menden could be a recipient of grant money that could be utilized. Um, the gentleman I spoke with, his name is uh, David Minucci. He's actually with uh, DEP. And he did say that, you know, Menden did has you, been on this agreement. Um, did you just say Benucci? Uh, Minucci, M-I-N-U-C-C-I. Oh, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Who are you thinking of? When you were a kid, you never called poop Benucci? Benucci? <laughs> no, no, I never did. <laughs> <laughs> I never listened to him. <laughs> I always used a four-letter word. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, um, that's how it was kind of described. It's almost like a re-up for something that we were already kind of part of. What, what I ended up doing was I kind of went ahead and I emailed Kim, I forwarded her that email, and I suspected that because of the signature requirement, she was probably familiar with it because it takes... Uh, a signature, a, a specific authoritative signatures to sign these things, and they have to be notarized. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing. I like to think that maybe, maybe Missy herself wasn't involved, but maybe this is something that had been before Kim prior, as to how we had already been on this agreement already. It just so happens that the agreement is coming to an end, and they're starting a new cycle. That'll go the next seven years. That that's kind of what prompted the email from Dave to, to sending it out to all the communities. Yeah. And you said SMRP. Yes, SMRP, uh, Sustainable Materials Recovery Pro Program. Tom. Um, okay. Yeah. That SMRP Missy has spoke of before, because it's a different name. That may be why she didn't recognize it, but I know that Missy has been, I don't know about part of, which I'm assuming she was, but she spoke of SMRP before. Yeah, yeah when you said that, when you said that, Tom, I may have even read emails that may have used that same term. Right. Yeah, I think um, the other individual that we may know that's affiliated with this and and uh, maybe more directly is um, you guys are familiar with Irene Congdon? There yep. you go. Yep. So Irene's our local person that is involved with SMRP. I recently had a conversation with her about it. Um, and so I, I think that's where the SMRP comes into play. I think Dave might be at the DEP level from a uh, an overall uh, municipality agreement perspective, but Irene is our like local boots on the ground individual that we've dealt with over the past years for SMRP. Makes when a we lot to, more sense. When we went to Upton to do that um, exercise, did you go, Tom? The Upton to the school? school? Yeah. Oh, for, that was for the, um, no, that was for- uh, uh, preparedness. There you go, thank you. That's when we met Eileen Condon, right? Oh, that's a good question. I don't. I was she a happy set woman, short? Eh, God, I don't remember Andy, unfortunately. Yeah, I believe that that's where we met her, and and that was part of the conversation, although it was off topic for the um, the exercise that we were doing. That's where part of the conversation was went to, and then she came to our meeting. Okay, I do remember the follow-up meeting somewhat where a woman came in, where Irene came in, actually, yeah. 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 Um, I didn't really correlate it with the emergency preparedness, though, but that may have been, maybe it's interconnected. <laughs> yeah, she, I, don't, I don't know if they're connected or not, but it was something that she was involved in, and she just may have been piggybacking it, bringing it in, and introducing us to it. Okay. If I remember correctly, which I probably don't. No, no, that sounds right. Um, I just made it all up. So, so I think, I mean, I know when Alan and I were first talking about this, we there was some concerns, I think, as to whether or not this was a, a contract situation that might require a council type of thing or our legal people to be involved with. Um, but I don't know if it's that. 
um, that kind of a, a contract thing uh, is what I got the sense after the fact, Alan. I'm just, I haven't heard back yet from Kim on it, so I was going to query her again because there's still some time. I mean, this doesn't go into effect until July 1. Yeah, no, I, I, I get it. But, you know, I mean, we, we do have a president of the um, board and he's got all the authority. So I don't know why he doesn't just go ahead and sign it and we'll get his signature notarized. All right. Settled. <laughs> Mr. Chairman has the authority. I think that went over his head. Andy, did you get that? <laughs> I'm actually away from the phone. I missed it. Oh, oh, oh well. <laughs> we just had you authorize a few thousand dollars for us and not on your behalf. That's fine. Well, that's fine. Let's do it. So, so on this topic, why don't we, um, why don't we say at this point, um, I'll do a follow up with Kim. Um, I mean, she's just kind of getting back from vacation, so she probably hasn't a chance to see all the emails. Um, I'll do a follow up with her on this topic, validate if what we're thinking is accurate and if it's just really more of a matter of a technicality and signing on board this agreement, more, th more so than being an issue of legality or contractual concern, so to speak. And if it's just a technicality and then, you know, Kim's the one that just basically can put her stamp on, on it. Agreed. Sound good? Sounds good. Okay, if I cool. may, could yeah. we try to could we try to pick up the speed on this uh, meeting? I won't sure. be able to stay the whole meeting. So I'd like to be able to touch a little bit on each one. Okie dokie. Thank you. So the next item up on the agenda was the BOH, the vacant BOH position, which as we understand is no, well, physically vacant, but we understand that uh, the uh, yeah. the individual that we all agreed upon that we like has actually been hired. The offer has gone out. The individual has accepted the offer. Um, yeah. The background checks have been completed. And yeah. as was alluded to earlier, um, the appointment was going to be um, put forth to the select board for quote unquote approval. Very good. And we expect that uh, he'll be starting on um, Monday, and I don't know, Alan, you'd mentioned I know last night when we talked, you were going to make an attempt to try to reach him to see if you wanted to participate. Um, in tonight's I meeting. decided against that with I decided against that where uh, action was being taken tonight at the selectmen's meeting. Yeah, it's probably smart. Yeah. OK, I, I didn't want it to be a contradiction. Gotcha. What were you going to do, Alan? What were you uh, thinking sorry? about doing? Uh, we had a discussion that we were going to extend an invite to listen in. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, no, I, no. I, I didn't, Does anybody didn't know possibly what time course. he might be starting on Monday? No, and we don't even know specifically it's Monday because the email that came back from Kim with the update was that he'd be ready to go. Um, but there was no confirmation that Monday was going to be the start date. That's just kind of if an expectation should, on our part. If you should get confirmation on that, would you let me know? Because what I have scheduled for work for Monday, I could possibly be there when he gets there. Not necessarily when he gets there, but that morning just to welcome him. I'll bring him a basket of flowers or something. Well, if you were uh, talking um, about bringing coffee and donuts, I'd be there too. Okay, I can do that. Kim did say someone would be in that seat Monday, May 2nd. Excellent. Yeah, that was true. That was a statement that was made. Yeah. So good. So whether, it's, why, um, whether it's that new administrative assistant or not, somebody will be in the seat. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, all right. So that's done. Let's see. Next item. Uh, this was at my request to discuss the senior discount trash program. So I know we talked about the program before and with all the flow and the involvement of different people that have come into play with this cycle, you know, a couple of different questions have kind of come, have kind of come up that I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page with regard to currently how the program is defined. Um, there, 
some been some discussions and seeing all these forms come through and moving them on to Dan and Dan has been awesome and taking the forms. He's been putting them into the system and, you know, and tracking it. It's pretty amazing how many people are on the, the discount program. Um, they had recent discussions about the format and, and the requirements in the program. And one of the discussions led to the concept of, of why we are doing the discount program. And uh, along that discussion line was yes, in addition to, you know, a senior being 65 and older, was there any consideration in doing the con uh, in doing this discount? Does it have anything to do with the, the thought that a senior in that household is producing less uh, tonnage, uh, thus, you know, justifying a reduction in the cost since theoretically seniors are not producing as much tonnage as an average family, you know, you should give apply a discount for them, you know, accordingly. Um, in looking at the requirements that are currently listed on the form, um, the guidelines that are reviewed are these four, that the applicant must be 65 or older at the time of application. The applicant is the homeowner of the property. The applicant must have a current census form on file with the town's clerk's office. And the home is listed on the application or the home that is listed on the application is the primary residence of the applicant or spouse. And of course, rental properties are reviewed by the board on an as case by case basis. So with that, there was no requirement in that what I just read you with regard to the number of people in the household as being part of the requirement. We do on the form, we actually have a line where people can fill in the number of people in the household, but we don't use that as a requirement element when we're reviewing the discount. So somebody raised the question, if you're not using the number of people in a household, a senior could theoretically have five people in their household, yet because they're a senior, we're given the, uh, the discount, but yet they could still be producing a, a decent amount of tonnage in their trash each week. So I just raise that. Is that a consideration? Are we, do we have any concern about the number of people in the household producing trash? Or is this really based on a benefit that we want to give seniors for, for being who they are? Do we have a number as to how many households in town are senior uh, programs? Oh God, with all the forms I've seen come through and stacked, we got about two, maybe a couple hundred, Andy, 250, something like that. I, I thought I heard 500 on the program. Oh, you could be right, Alan. Do we by I any chance I heard know how many of those houses have multiple residents? I, I know some do. And a lot of what I see come through, they do list, you know, two, two people as the average number, but I've seen some with more, three or four. Um, is the system currently working? Uh, is um, is the bill getting paid with the with the structure that we have as far as X amount of seniors and X amount of regular um, subscribers? Is the bills getting paid? You mean when you say the bill getting paid, meaning Harvey, Harvey and Wheeler Brader? Oh, we're, yeah, we don't have any issues with. Um... I say leave it alone. Okay. Let's yeah. not micromanage it. Let's just leave it alone. If they're getting away with one, let it be. Well, I wouldn't want to phrase it as, as getting away. I, I think that, you know, you get to a certain point and I think, you know, like, like with other things, well, the discounts that seniors are given, a lot of it has to do with what they've, you know, kind of earned at their time of life. They've kind of reached a point and you say, Hey, this is a nice thing to do. Um, I just, I only raised it tonight because other some voices that come up about, well, geez, you know, if it doesn't have anything to do with, um, you know, the trash quantity of tonnage being produced, A, well, why do we even ask the question about how many are in the household? And, you know, there was some, a little bit of thing about, well, if a senior is actually getting a discount, but could, could, be, could be producing the same amount of trash, you know, is that okay? Like I said, if the bill's getting paid and we're not falling behind, it ain't broke, don't fix it, just leave it. Because we, we could micromanage that to death. You, you could, I mean, you could, you could, we could, it could be changed such that you could put in an element where we, where we want to say, 
we want the, the limit, the number of households needs to be limited to two. But uh, my view personally is that I, um, I don't think that that, I'd like to think of this as that we're doing something good for the senior population. Exactly. That's exactly. my view. And but, they're gonna lie. If there's five people working, living in a the house, they're gonna lie. They're gonna write two. Are we gonna chase their homework? I'm not. No, it's a valid point. I don't, don't think they would. I wouldn't assume they would lie, but um, I just, I would rather look at this, that we're doing something nice for the senior population yeah. in the community myself, but exactly. yeah. Alan, thoughts? Um, I, I came on board after this program was already in place. So I was under the assumption that seniors put out less trash. And this was a program that the Board of Health put in place to show some respect and consideration to our seniors. So I was under the uh, assumption that it was those three elements that, you know, earn them the discount. Right. Um, I, do, I do agree. Uh, it would be a lot to try to chase someone's paperwork um, for accuracy. Um, and it's probably make more hard feelings than it's worth. Sure. Um, yeah. I, I'd like to think that most seniors that apply for the discount are applying for it on a, you know, understood basis. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on board. I, so, so we're going to leave, we'll leave as is and not consider any changes at this time. I'm all for that. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So that's scratch that. Um, next item we had was the town hall campus restoration project grant deadline. Uh, this is really more of an update. This kind of came about because um, Ann had sent an email, Alan. I, I mean, uh, Andy, um, a couple weeks back. I guess there's a grant element that's associated with this uh, town hall restoration project. And she just reached out to the Board of Health. Just uh, she wanted to make sure that uh, whatever was going to be needed from our perspective, from an approval perspective at the Board of Health would come through in an expeditious fashion so that the um, there wouldn't be a hold up in the project and that the grant money would be utilized by the deadline. Um, so um, I had actually asked Anne if she thought there was a need to come to the tonight's meeting, but she felt very comfortable. Um, she's been working with uh, Gemma Kite, uh, the company Horsley Witten Group. I guess it's working the uh, town hall restoration, and um, we kind of gave the, you know, the approvals already kind of gone through. Tom Ryder had already been involved, so no real issues. And um, he, Tom approved the application. And I think the one thing that Tom was just waiting on was he just needed to know who the installers were going to be. And Chandler said that she would, uh, you know, let Tom and the board know as soon as they have the info. That was about it on that one. And I do understand, with regard, just a general comment on that. I understand that the old police department is coming down Friday. Has anyone heard that? Not yet. I haven't heard that yet. Well, I know we got an email saying that uh, National Grid was going to. Well, not what. No, this yes, National Grid was turning off the electricity uh, this Friday, the 29th. And then I was in the office today, oh. and Gail mentioned she had heard that the uh, building was going to be demoed Friday. The old police department. Oh, that would make sense. No one's in town hall on Friday. Right. I just didn't know if you guys heard confirmation of that. No, I, I did see some something about um, the power being shut off, but where it was Friday and town halls closed, it didn't trigger right. anything. And I know, Andy, you're not part of that, right? Uh, you all actually thought you were involved in the demo. I was offered the opportunity. I did the walkthrough with the chief and everybody, all the other uh, contractors put together a bid. And there was two reasons why I decided, actually three reasons why I decided not to. First of all, I'm a one-man band. It's a pretty good project. Right. If it was anywhere else, um, if it was a building, standalone building by itself, I would certainly attack it with great, great enthusiasm. But there's, there's a generator out back. It has to be my estimation, probably 
at least a half, uh, $50,000 to $100,000, maybe more. It's huge. It's right up against the building, maybe two feet away from the building. And then, and that's on a pad that can't be moved. And then the other one is the Sally Port door. It's right up against the Sally Port door. That building comes down. And if it's not done properly with one man, it can crash into the brand new building and the doors. So I said, you know what? Best thing for me to do here is just say thank you for your time. I appreciate the opportunity to bid on your work, but I need to pass. Do you know who actually got the job to do it? Out of curiosity? I haven't heard yet, no. Okay. Put some, um, put some, I know Lopes was in there. And I recognized a couple of the other names. One was from Peabody. A couple of them were down from down by the Cape. But they're full full crews. They got six or eight guys and probably half a dozen machines, and they'll they'll come in and do a good job, safer yep. thing, you know. Cool. Okay. Ready. All right, now, Alan. You don't have anything to add on this topic, do you? No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, next one was uh, discuss VNA contract. I just had to put on that because I know we're getting to the point. I mean, how do we want to proceed on that? Still a year away, right? Um, a year away? All the better no, part July. Of it. July. Is it? Okay. Yeah, we go fiscal They're with them. Only one year contracts. What do we do? Okay, what do you propose? Asking for a number. I mean, is, is it a case where you want to do a, a reach out to the BNA and say, uh, hey, you know, the, the board is looking to see what your contract is looking like for the coming year? Um, so we I can agree. make a determination. All right. Together a proposal and send it to us. Does anybody know what our present number is? I don't. Um, that's probably in the computer, probably under the contracts folder. Yeah, I, I can't remember if it's seven or 12. I mean, we were hovering around five for a long time until COVID hit. And then I, I think thought it, it shot up. Seven sounded right, Alan. I think the 12 came into play and then there was a quote unquote miscalculation that was done. Remember that? Okay. And I think they backed yeah, it down, yeah, yeah. right? So I think you're on target there with the seven. Regardless, okay. when the proposal comes in, it's got to go to... Um, Council. Yes. Uh, that contract has to go to council, Andy? Absolutely. Okay. Any contract does. Right. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll do a reach out um, to the gal over there at the VNA and just um, start the ball. Is it Michelle? Michelle, that's it. Yep. There you go. Good memory, AJ. Nice job. Really, really not, Alan. It just came to me out of the clear blue. <laughs> uh, and the last item we had on the agenda, well, the last list of item was, uh, which I put on, was discuss local permitting requirements for a company called Tatter and Howard. Um, Taz. Who? Taz. I didn't hear that. You? Taz and Howard. Oh, Tata. T-A-T-A? Tatas. Tatas, yeah, Tatas. Tatas and Howard. <laughs> uh, so I, was, I we, was afraid to put that on the agenda. I didn't know if you were pulling my leg. <laughs> yeah. The reason I brought that up is we got an email uh, from the gentleman at this company. His name is Robert Sims. Um, he was basically just kind of giving us a heads up. Um, there, um, it, um, let me see. Let me look at the uh, email. Okay, so the email that uh, Robert sent to us. This is uh, back uh, back on the thirteenth of uh, this month. Uh, it says, "Greetings. We are working with a client that is looking to drill and permit a small public water supply in Menden. We've done wells in many communities and typically include the BOH in correspondence related to the permitting." and development of a public water supply. We are not usually required to respond to local permitting requirements because the DEP process is so much more rigorous and detailed. Given that, we were not planning on completing the local permit process unless we hear otherwise. We're available to discuss. I can be reached at the number below. Um, and then uh, so I also left a message on the office answer machine. Thank you, Robert. 
I responded by saying, um, we appreciate you reaching out to us to keep us informed and in the loop with your understanding of how much more rigorous and detailed the DEP process is compared with the local Board of Health, I would say that the direction you are leaning toward would be correct. What I would like to do is run this by my fellow board members just to confirm. Also, I wanted to make you aware that our office is, and I just gave a heads up about not having a full-time administrative assistant. Um, and then I did ask at the end, I did have a question. I said, I asked if he could provide the, some of the logistics surrounding the new PWS, such as the user, the location, et cetera. Um, unfortunately, I have not yet heard back from Robert, but I just wanted to bring it to you guys' attention. Is there any reason uh, why or something about the local, our local presence or guidelines that warrant him to be following? Or do you think his approach about just satisfying the DEP level is sufficient enough from our perspective. Everything that you stated is 100% correct and we are not um, necessary to be involved. Certainly it would not hurt to keep us in the loop and tell us what you've done simply because of the proximity. Um, but he is right about the uh, PWS being under their uh, scrutinization and they're much more stringent than we are. As far as the location, if you came down to the Board of Health office and didn't turn left into the office, keep going straight, the generator building, not the generator building, the uh, that building there on the corner on the left, the end of the parking lot, keep heading towards Shelley's Field and on the left in the corner, there's a pile of boulders um, to create a, um, a pad for the well rig to go out into that left rear corner of that dirt parking lot. It's been, Dan Bai has been working on this for a few weeks. I met with him probably a month ago at least and gave him a price and it's been put together and it's lost somewhere in the red tape in the town hall, but uh, that's where we're gonna be working to create the, the well pad for them to drill the well. But everything that you stated is 100% correct. And So what you're, you're saying is you're, you're familiar with this company and then the PWS they're talking about is what you just described? For the because currently the existing well for the town complex is in the lower section of the of the town hall. Are you familiar with that situation? Yeah, but before you go too far, the one of the things that Robert did not identify was what the PWS was related to. But you're you're making a connection to the town hall complex. So are you telling me that you know that Tatter and Howard is working on the town hall complex? If that's not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that that's the name that Dan told me. Could be for something totally different, but I do okay. believe it's for, for the town hall complex. Because okay. that has to be the, um, the police station, town hall, and the annex where the Board of Health and the building is. Okay. See, that was one of the things that Robert did not identify, and that's why I asked the question. So it sounds like, though, you're connecting the dots here, and you think that Robert is talking about the uh, town hall complex. I could be all wet. Never know. <laughs> Get away from the pump. <laughs> okay, well, that could be. Yeah, again, I, he hadn't emailed me back to tell me. So, but you may, like I said, you sounds like you might have some insight. Maybe that is the connection. Brady, thank you. Okay, Alan. That's why. Thoughts? That's why he's the chairman. Right. <laughs> is that why? <laughs> I thought it was because none of us wanted to take those midnight phone calls when people are spraying stuff over the fence in the neighbor's yard. Oh, that's true also. <laughs> At night. <laughs> You're right, huh? Brings back good memories, doesn't it, Andy? It was after a Patriots game, and I sat here and yahooed the Patriots to a win, crashed, and they called me at 2 a.m., and I was numb enough to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, All Mr. Right. Chairman. So that, 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 concluded the, uh, that concluded the formal agenda items. I just wanted to mention two things that were not recently anticipated. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the work that's taking place on 9 Main Street. It, uh, uh, the new septic? Yeah, it happens to be the same owner of the property at 106 Millville. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, so Andy, are you familiar? I've only seen the work. I knew the little bit that you just said. Has there been issues? 
Well, so the, the wonderment that's come forward is, um, it seems like that project has come to a standstill. Is there, and that we were kind of asked, is there any requirement that says they have to kind of do the work in a certain period of time in a certain time frame? The only time that would come into effect is if it was the onslaught of winter and freezing cold temperatures for the simple reason that, as we all know, when when it gets very cold, the ground freezes. It's not right. prudent to install a septic system on frost because right. the frost heaves, then it thaws, and it changes all your inverts, and the system pretty much can be junk. Um, yeah. I would That would probably be a question for Steve Donatelli. He would probably okay. have that answer. Okay. I can do that. I can reach out to Steve. What's that? Is the property occupied? I do not believe so. Okay. Do you have you have Steve uh, Donatelli's email or, or phone number? I do. Yeah, I've been communicating with him fairly fairly regularly. Cool. Yeah. So I guess the concern was that it's been sitting so long and nothing's happening. There might be some people getting tired of seeing the the state of the property the way it is with no action, no activity. You know. So that's a given. And if there is any open holes. If they went to set a tank and didn't set it, that's certainly a, a concern for the the uh, highway department. That comes under, um, oh, what's that girl's name? It's a law where, where she fell in a hole and, and got killed. And Jesse's law is that it, Alan? I don't remember. Okay, if there is an open gaping hole there, that's a danger to the public. That can come on because Alan Tatro is the one that um, issues trench permits. And that would come under his purview to um, police that if there's any open gaping holes. Did they, did they dig the septic field out and not fill it in? And it's dangerous. And it's you know over three feet is considered a danger. Uh, danger, Will Robinson. So that may be something to check into. Okay. Yeah, I personally haven't uh, personally gone up and inspected the site, um, but I do know that there's. I do know there's a general state of um work going on that hasn't been active in quite a while but okay if i think um, of it what i'm going to buy the next time i'll stop and go in there okay and then the last thing i had was uh, just for awareness really um alan agro had sent us an email the other day alan you might have seen it had to do with um what's happening with 106 millville road um i saw you, the address and i skipped right over it <laughs> chicken <laughs> uh well, that, that, was, that was one of the problems there was uh, that was actually no pun intended i didn't think about that um well as we all know we're all familiar with what happened at 106 Millville road so um the aftermath is i guess the local residents um of course are not happy with the situation over there so they had hired an attorney and uh, mm -hmm. they're pursuing I guess the decisions that were made, um, I think through the building department, as far as um, what they feel is uh, were violations, but I believe it had come back to them that there did not appear to be any from what they were told. So they've, they're appealing it. I believe they had a, um, a meeting in front of the ZBA this past week. Um, I met to, a, to attend it, but I missed it. Um, and Ellen reached out on behalf of the ZBA. They are now looking for documentation from the various groups that were involved in the initial problems. Um, mm -hmm. So from our perspective at the BOH, you know, we investigated really from the standpoint of a what was felt to be an illegal restaurant uh, food operation there. Um, so I did get um, Danielle's report. Danielle sent that to me and I forwarded that off to Ellen. So, and I think that's the only involvement that we really had with the 106 Millville Road formally. Um, what, what about when Tom Ryder went out to the property and met with the homeowners about the uh, the fill? Oh, Tom Ryder did? Possible, yeah, mm -hmm. I was there. Yeah. Tom Ryder, okay. Ernie, and the landlord. Well, yeah, I wasn't there when Ernie was there, but I was there just with the two adjacent homeowners um, when they were explaining about the pipe that was crushed um, and they were concerned about their wells. But I don't believe they ever submitted well results to us. Never had a baseline either to uh, go by. So that's probably what scared away. Just so you know, 
the lawyer that the homeowners hired is the same lawyer that um, was hired to, to work on the Richardson property up in Uxbridge lawsuit. I believe he was hired by the town to sue the Richardson properties for what was going on there. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It was a frivolous um, charge. He ended up getting shot down. Now the lawsuit goes against the town and for treble damages. And the charges that this man's lawyer came forward with, the exact same charges as to what happened in Uxbridge. So there is, um, I don't want to say concern, but there is uh, there's a history of doing this. And a precedent? Specific. Yes. Okay. Well, I guess, you know, it's in the hands of the ZBA to to make a determination on the appeal for this for this uh, client, this plaintiff. Um, to land for it. So, so that's a good, Alan raised a good point. So should I be reaching out to Tom Ryder then to offer any reporting information that he would have been involved with in the property? Or leave it at Danielle Ledman's report? First of all, has anybody reached out to us to submit anything that we may have? Uh, well, Danielle, uh, had her report um, that she submitted. Probably. Either the lawyer or the property owners, the 14 and 16, any one of those three people reach out to the Board of Health, or did Ellen Agro reach out to the Board of Health and say, hey, what do you got for paperwork? Did anybody say that? Yeah, that, that's what prompted this discussion. Ellen Agro sent an email to quite a few people and the Board of Health was included, and she's seeking all the documentation that had to do with 106 oh, Nova Road. Sorry. No, no, no worries. And that's what prompted the um, my reach out to Danielle. She sent her report in and I sent that over to Ellen. So she's got that. Ellen's got that from Danielle. I just didn't know with this follow up here where Ellen just talked about Tom Ryder being involved. Is there any reason to try to get any, see if Tom had anything or would want to have any, oh. want to provide any kind of reporting on the on the site? Certainly wouldn't hurt to reach out to him and see if he had anything to send to you by email. And the other okay. thing is uh, meeting minutes. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, yeah. That's a good thought, too. It was two or three um, uh, meetings where those people were on, on our calls, on our uh, meetings. Let me ask you this. How do you go back, and, and just out of my own curiosity, how do you go back and find um, a subject that was in a meeting minutes a year ago? You have to read every one or does the computer magically uh, bring it back up when you type in a search word? Well, I, I don't know how it works on the search part, but a year ago we were everything was remote, so nothing is in writing per se. They're all audio recordings that are stored because our meetings have been recorded for quite a while. Just wondering how. Right, but the, but the, the minute the agendas are on in in paper. Yes, the agendas are correct. Right. So you okay. could go back, could search through the agendas. Yeah. And then pull up the appropriate recording. There you go. Well I, I don't I'd have to look and see if the uh what the archive history would be on the agendas. They're probably all archived automatically. I I would assume they all go through Ellen. Well, at the time they were going, yeah, they do go through, you're right, they do go through Ellen. So Ellen may have a copy. I was thinking more on the BOH side, but you're right. They all go, we all give them to Ellen, right? Right. Yeah. Um, what time of year was that again when this all came about? Well, let me look. I might have it right in front of me. A person to ask. <laughs> <laughs> He's on notes, man. I said me, wrong person to ask. I couldn't remember for uh, the summertime or? Nine. Let's see, uh, 915 of 21 is when we got the 106 Millville Road complaint, illegal restaurant, slaughterhouse, housing issues. Nice, okay. All right. Actually, so Danielle's probably going to date on her thing, too. Yeah. Uh, and, and by the way, there was no AJ at that meeting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so that was 915. Um, 
Okay, that gives a good time frame. That's when it all kind of started then in September. Hmm. Yeah. And I can just so kind I, of fast forward to the next few meetings and see. Yeah, I got something. I got something here for uh, October sixth. Okay. Yep. I think that's the meeting that uh, Ernie Horn came to. Right. Okay. Or was on the audio. It was so, on yeah, audio. I'm looking back. Yeah, if you start somewhere around nine fifteen. Okay. That looks when it like when it first came on our radar. Okay, cool. And I'll just fast forward over the next couple of months and kind of do that. Okay, excellent. Okay, well that's all I had with regard to that topic. Good. Okay, motion. So we need this. What? 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 We need to set our next meeting, and you need. Yeah. We need to determine if our uh, senior administrative assistant is going to take over doing the agendas. There you go. So our next meeting date is the first order of business. So the 27th is today. That would put us at May 11th. So for me, yeah, May good. 11th and May 25th. Is that good? Sure. Next meeting, May 11th. That's fine. Okay. Five eleven twenty two at seven p.m. Um, I mean, I'm more than willing to, to to hang on and do this. Just a suggestion, Alexa, Alan. Yo. Just a suggestion, mate. I don't want to volunteer you, but if you could stay on for one more two-week session and include Jack in understanding what exactly you're doing, then as he takes over for the next one, he can tweak that process to what works for him to get us an agenda. Sounds good to me. Thank you yep. very much for that. Cool. All right. So well, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to overburden the guy. <clears throat> and I mean, it is a team effort. So I mean, I can hang on for even longer if it takes something off his plate, so that he can concentrate on something that we can't do. True. That's a good point. He he's got to have his hands full, just kind of cleaning up stuff for a little while. My and thought, it's it's yeah. really important. It's like the it's like the board of health office has been closed for months. Yeah, it's close to. Yep. So, you know, I just threw that out there. I mean, so, you know, I can hang on as long as needed um, to give him time to focus on things that are more important. Okay. Um, that's good. Thank you. Yeah, I wouldn't think it would go much more than a couple of cycles. Whatever, whatever it takes, if that's what you know, you guys want. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. No, nope, that's fine. I mean, Tom, I I know the last you know three or four weeks you've really dove into what's going on in the office, and I, I've told you before, and I'll say it again, it's really appreciated. Uh, you're the yes, most computer you. savvy of all of us. Uh, so you, you've been. I mean, I don't even check my emails that much anymore i'm just too busy working oh no you guys you know you guys got a schedules and you got work you do it ties you up you know really early morning till late in the evening so second nature know. for you and it is greatly appreciated tom at this point i'm gonna bow out you guys have a good night well aj you too, uh, i'll buddy. make a motion to i'll make a motion to adjourn i'll second awesome. it's it's official all right thank you very much good night good night alan thank you